All right. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Fridays at 4 on twitch.tv slash DDO stream. I'm DDO's community manager, Cordovan, and I'll be with you for the next hour, hanging out, having some fun, going to Lamania today. That's what we're going to do. Uh, checking out the new stuff on the forums. Uh, we've got our first two archetypes that are going to be coming here soon. For update 58, we had our first preview this week. It's, it's going down soon, but it'll be at least after the show, I think, I hope. I expect. So we'll uh, kind of send off Lamani here for this first preview. We will have another preview in the near future for Lamania. Stay tuned for more information about that. And uh, yeah, I guess that's what we got going on. We've got a few things happening in game, including a double daily dice XP for this weekend. And I would also remind people that the Hardcore League is got a little time left, but not that much. It ends at 2 p.m. Eastern on Tuesday, February 7th. So uh, one, two, about two and a half weeks or so left on Hardcore, but might be uh, an opportunity to go do that as well if you were interested. And yes, there is a third archetype. It wasn't ready for this first preview, although you can see bits of it over on Lamania, but that'll be coming too here for Update 58. Um, what, there was one other thing I was going to call up. Let me see if I still can. I was going to look at our preview schedule and snow peaks, because I think I might have some more information about that. Let me go make sure. Yeah, everything is going well here. We're actually, we have some snow that's hitting the area today, and that's, that's pretty unusual. I haven't had too much snow this year. I don't think it'll be more than maybe a couple inches, but... We'll see. Yes, so next Wednesday, uh, we are set to have our patch. That'll be update 57, patch 2. And uh, that will also include the start of the Snow Peaks Festival event. So Snow Peaks is the same Snow Peaks as last year, uh, which is two different challenges. And then we've got the we've got new rewards, though, for Snow Peaks this year. And there's a little bit else in update 57, patch 2, and we'll have release notes early next week related to that. Um, there's also work being done in U57 patch 2 that if everything checks out, we're going to be announcing a free transfer period to Orion and Sarlona. Uh, that'll be not next week, but, uh, but we'll see how it goes in terms of the timing on that. But that's going to be real coming up here pretty soon too. And my goal is to have uh, an announcement of at least, let's say, four or five days heads up before we turn it on and we'll let you know how long it's going to run to at that time. I don't want to say more about it today because there's too many dependencies yet, but we're close. And so we should have more information about that. And the goal is to get that out uh, ready to go uh, for the hardcore after party as well. Not that it matters because all transfers from the hardcore will be free, but um, it should resolve things at that time if everything goes well. If everything goes well so we'll have more about that as we get closer to it and that's really what i've got on the short-term radar here is snow peaks uh 57.2 next week and uh then also upcoming lamania work on what'll be end up being a free quest i believe and uh the third archetype and then we'll have to see how things go after that we we probably will have a third lamania as well but we'll see Let's see if I have any questions in chat. What about Argo transfers? So I'm aware of just a couple of singular reports of transfers, uh, problems on Argo, but we have to go all the way back to what? Basically late October here, early November, to get the story on why Orion and Sarlona. But at that time we were having specific problems and so that is what we committed to. Everyone knows transfers have been in a broken state since then. So ultimately, if there are a few transfer issues to other worlds, which there have been, including Argonus and just happens to be most recently for a couple of days here, um, for some people, but not everybody, that should get fixed hopefully in the near future and then we'll reopen these free transfers, but it won't be to Argonus. No. But the volume and our commitment has been to Orion and Sirlona, so that we will continue to do that. I can't talk about, uh, oh yeah, I can talk about this, but I can't, I can't answer your question about when on the next level cap hike. 
But I can answer your question about the producer's letter, which is we spent a bunch of time working on the producer's letter this week and got it largely sent out ready for everyone to take a look at and approve and offer feedback on things of that nature. Uh, next week we'll all be working, doing some work to get it hopefully in a publishable state, you know, images and, and things like that, get the text on in a web document, all that sort of thing. That work's going to happen in the near future here too. If everything goes well, the goal is to have the producer's letter published in the very near future and then also have Severlin join us next Friday here at 4 for a Q&A. So all this is not 100% certain on this Friday afternoon, but seems likely. Uh, if everything goes well, we should be able to get uh, both the producer's letter out in the near future I don't want to commit to it next week because that's an awful short turnaround. I don't, I don't know if we're going to get it, but done by the end of the next week. But we might try, and we'll see how it goes. Uh, but if not then, then probably within the next couple of weeks it'll be published. And Sev will be on next Friday for Fridays at 4 for a general Q&A. So you can just ask him whatever you want, and if he can answer it, he will, and we'll see what, it, what we can get out of him, right? So uh, there we go in terms of things beyond update 58. Uh, I, the release notes are in process on 57.2. I expect to see a final state of those on Monday. So that's why I don't have them for you today. All right. Yeah, let's swap over inside of the game here. I am on Lamania. There, I could wave. Hello. And uh, I just rolled up a couple of, of the new archetypes, got them to 20, so that we could take a look at the trees and what have you. So this is a Dark Hunter that I just uh, rolled up quick as an admin and got some basic gear on. And then I thought we would take a look actually at the articles themselves. Let me see about... There we go. Let me briefly turn down the in-game audio just so we're not hearing that... Uh, tinkling sounds and such in the back. So overall update 58 preview 1 uh, is looking at two new archetypes, a blight caster and a dark hunter. Each of them has their own thread, uh, which we'll be looking into in a little bit. And the blight caster is a druid subclass, uh, sorry, archetype, and uh, dark hunter is a ranger archetype, um, essentially as well. And uh, archetype. And there are some other changes in update 58 as well. Bug fixes, level 32 augments. Now correctly grant their proper amount and type of elemental resistance. Uh, Purge the Wicked's bonus critical confirmation no longer drops on death. Uh, we've got uh, the Eldritch Knight capstone now providing its proper plus two con and uh, some other bug fixes as well. You can read these over on the Lamania forums. Now, these are the current work in progress update 58 release notes. It is possible a few of these things may end up uh, in 57.2, but I don't think this patch in particular will. I think this is all 58, not 57.2. And then we'll have different uh, release notes for next week's patch that uh, I'll be finalizing on Monday. along with some other people. Um, I don't know that there's a large variety of cleric, favored soul, and paladin abilities may now be used while moving. That'll be cool. Effects a smoke bomb, now correctly removed when you attack. War priest ameliorating strike, now correctly healing undead players. What? That can't be. Uh, the shield specialty feat, now correctly granting PRR. Um... Now we have, related to Isle of Dread sound crashing issues, in update 58 here, we have a, corrected some sound effects for raptors and other Isle of Dread creatures that had bit rates that were higher than normal. I believe they were 24 rather than 16. In the hopes that it may fix an issue where the game client crashes in Isle of Dread for some players when sound effects are enabled. If this bug had been affecting you in the past, please try playing Isle of Dread with sound effects on and let us know whether it helps. Sorry that we kind of have to ask you to confirm this for us, but the, the reality is this, is this has been a hard one to reproduce. But we did find something that was different, and so we have now undifferented it. 
and that should hopefully make a difference. That said, hey, we were at higher bit rate. That's cool. We're gonna we're gonna move over to DSD lossless audio. It's gonna be a really big file. So. Yeah, audio file jokes. Okay. I'm not sure that I see anything else here that I want to bring up. Let me quick call up chat, see if I've got any pressing questions I should mention or I talk about. Related to uh, DA, can we get a toggle to cast cause wounds spell on self? Perhaps. I don't know. Uh, last Wednesday, lag was bad. You and two other guild members had a bad night. Was something going on at DDO? Not that I'm aware of. Uh, did we use any feedback from the first batch of archetypes, specifically the negative from Dark Apostate, to help these ones? Or were they already too, uh, you say, fat, maybe complete or whatever in development? No, I think we were informed by the feedback on the first round of archetypes as we worked on this next round of three archetypes, because remember, one's coming out here yet. Um, I think that informed the process. Uh, with a question about, quote, Watsy and fan content, can we get a clear posted SSG stance on fan content for DDO stuff? I know some people want slash do make some DDO as a backdrop. So that is already, that already exists. It has for a very long time. It's in the Daybreak Terms of Service. That's what we utilize. So when you go click on the Terms of Service, that's what you're led to. And that talks specifically about, like, say, YouTube monetization and how you can use our content and just do that. It, it's fine. We're pretty open about that kind of thing. Um, it talks a little bit about like kind of fundraising and Patreons as well, if that's a concern of yours. I can't offer really advice beyond the legal advice that we have to give, right? So um, I would say in general, when we look at fan content, we love fan content. I mean. I, I come from fan content. I, I love this stuff, right? And um, so in general, there's no harm. No one's ever getting hurt, and it's great. Uh, it's very rare that people want to monetize, and it's even rarer when it's successful. Uh, but all that's covered by the terms of service there under Daybreak's conditions, so just follow that, and you should be fine. I, if you're asking about the OGL stuff, it doesn't affect us at all. Uh, I'm not. I don't know if I'm going to post an official statement on SSG about it, but it has no impact on us whatsoever. We're not at all licensed through the OGL, so it has nothing to do with us. Well, Tolero will be on a future Fridays at four to talk through the producer's letter. I think we're going to have Sev on uh, instead, but yes, I would expect to see Tolero on the live stream here at some point in the coming month or so. Can you tweet questions to Sev uh, Severlin? Uh, historically, it is not a hard time getting questions for the live stream. People have more than enough questions to to offer. Uh, but yes, we you could tweet us some questions. Uh, just maybe reply on Twitter or whatever to one of the announcements about it. That is forthcoming. It's not yet. And uh, well, we can take a look at it. If we run out of questions, maybe we can go into things in the past. But I'm not expecting that to be really a concern. I think everything that's on most people's minds should be covered by the general Q&A that, that we'll have next Friday. Is the Immortal Sun Flask still going to be available? I believe so. I haven't heard of any reason it won't be. Pretty sure that's unchanged. And yes, I like it too. It's nice. All right, cool. I think we're caught up on questions. Uh, let me just see if there's anything else we should mention here. Uh, there, we've, we're up in some base damage on Warlock. 
uh, a base Eldritch Blast dice is now 1d8. Base Packed die will now be 1d6. This is an update 58. The single target basic Eldritch Blast now scales 125% spell power and some other bits like that. Um, the level 15 Warlock Pack special abilities now scale as if they were spells and are modified by bonus spell DCs. For UI, it's worth mentioning that with Update 58, we're going to have a new gameplay option called Show Detailed Chest Information. This is going to default to Off. While true, the first time you touch a chest and generate its loot, the chest will print out some information about its ransack info into your chat log. Only you will be able to see this information. So it'll help you track chest ransack in quests. So you're going to default it to true if you don't mind seeing that ransack info in your chat log the first time you touch a chest and generate its loot. Um, but that's... That's an option. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm familiar with a, a little bit of the cone question on there. I, you know, just provide your feedback on the forums and we'll see about the mm, blast shape of the cone. My understanding is that there's a discussion that's been had on the Lamania forums, and then there's a discussion that's been had on Lamania by people who actually used it. And there are conclusions to whether it's, uh, you know, its impact on the warlock are, are somewhat different things based on actual practice versus theory crafting there. So let me know what your actual feedback is would be best. A series of changes have been made to tooltip generation. The names of feats and enhancements are now bigger SLA tooltips now display spell info like spell point cost, DC, spell school, automatically. Certain aspects of enhancements are no longer shown in the tooltip, such as prerequisites, if you own the enhancement and are looking via your character sheet. When hovered over in the tree, they will show their action point cost and prereqs as usual. Uh, we're also changing some things to how we display feats to the players. Character creation, display in... Neater, neat categories, easier to parse and sort through. Summary at the bottom shows you all feats without a category view. The collapse expand button up top uh, plays nice with all these things so you can collapse and expand it all with one click. Feats display in neater categories on the character sheet as well. Collapse expand also works there. Feats acquired on a temporary basis now display an indicator below their name saying so. Uh, the level up screen we've swapped out some of the categories to properly match their buttons. You can click anywhere on the category to open and close it. There's a new checkbox at the top, check by default. If you uncheck it, the feat window will hide all feats you are not actually able to train. In practice, it cuts about 60% of the elements out of the window, making it easier to find what you want. There are two new buttons up top, collapse all and expand all. Uh, we've modified the list of feats a bit to show uh, the player during level up to exclude even more feats that they would never qualify for. And some other bits as well. So some UI elements. This is also related to a little bit of kind of overall just better efficiency of the UI, but maybe a little bit of game performance as well. Maybe it's just an art thing, though. My guess is that it won't hurt. if we're taking a look at that code. Uh, and then, yeah, journals have a slightly more readable font and contrast. Crafting storage now is an alphabetical storage or sorting option. I understand. I saw that thread in the forums. I was like, I don't want alphabetical. I want what the stuff I most recently put in to be at the top. Uh, that's great feedback and hopefully something we can take a look at in the future. That seems like a pretty good idea. Yeah, and that's what we got. So why don't I swap on over real quick to the Dark Hunter, which is the uh, character I've got up if we need to take a look at things. Uh, this thread is by Torque, so please do uh, give him your feedback. Uh, we've got about seven pages of it already, which is great. But please do uh, give us your feedback on the Dark Hunter Ranger as you play through it on the Mania. 
this tree, uh, it's an archetype, and, you know, the new archetype tree, Dark Hunter, will replace Arcane Archer. Now, there was some confusion about that. You can still get be an Arcane Archer Ranger. It's just, this is a archetype, right? The archetype does not offer Arcane Archer as an option, since so you get Dark Hunter. It's assassination, sneaking, hunting, trap making, scavenging, and thrown weapons. Uh, changes from base class, it's got trap finding at one, uh, trap making, trap sense, and uh, sneak attack die every five levels instead of every two. Means they get half the sneak attack die uh, a rogue does, 5d6 instead of 10d6. They have fewer favored enemy feats, although still quite a few, and by the time you hit 20, if you're a pure dark hunter, you get all but one of these. Uh, vermin, elf, aberration, animal, humanoid, monstrous humanoid. They do get curative admixtures, uh, but at the cost of not getting the regular cure spells. Skills, they get open, lock, and disable device as class skills because of their trapping. Past life is a sneak attack uh, and sneak attack damage per snack. One sneak attack and plus one sneak attack damage per stack. There's one to say. At core six, you'll get a smoke grenade of a target. Loses their immunity to sneak attack and 25% of their fortification for 25 seconds. Uh, they also do have a bit where you'll get a stacking dodge and, and some other bits too. I'm not going to read the whole tree. But they get decent sneak speed as well. Get lots of enhancement damage bonus, 5%, while sneaking to melee range and unarmed attacks. Lingers 10 seconds after you leave stealth. So, yeah, you would expect the Dark Hunter, you know, as a flavor to go into stealth and out of stealth. You get a Black Wolf as an animal companion. Oh, I have to call, call up that Dark Wolf. I haven't gotten onto the Enhancement Trees yet, that's why. Black Wolf in higher tiers gets to hit and damage. They do get Assassin's Training for Assassinate DCs, additional sneak attack die and such throughout. Ooh, at tier four, Lupine Instincts, your Black Wolf inherits search and spot, automatically finds traps and secret doors for you, assuming you meet the statistical threshold. What? They're going to replace a hireling? The hireling is always the one who finds my traps, if it's not me. This one's kind of sweet, too. And tier four, Slayer in the Dark, killing an enemy grants you a plus five morale bonus, two melee and range power stacking up to four times lasts for 20 seconds there so that's pretty cool and there is a smoke bomb sla as well and death attack up a tier five ranged assassinate looks like uh some of the how it all works is going to be adjusted over time so let me take a quick look at that enhancement tree here and you can see Dark Hunter is up. So I'm going to uh, bring out my Dark Wolf. Let's get that thing going. Oops. There we go. Hello. Hello, Fern. How you doing? And you can just kind of see here with the chorus, right? You get a stacking dodge, the smoke trap, and then ultimately you get smoke grenade as an SLA. Yeah, some good stuff in the tree there. And then uh, let me move over to, oh, actually let me quick Drop the window so you can see the Black Wolf pet. Sorry about that. I wasn't paying attention to what I was doing. Here's the Black Wolf. And you can see in the tree here, Dark Hunter is replacing a...
Let's go to that smoke trap. Snap trap. And smoke bomb. All right. I don't know if I'm going to be able to do these in the dojo. Let's find out. Okay. Smoke bomb. Alright. Well, you can't really see anything. But that's what we got so far for it. Alright. Uh, the other one, though, is the Blightcaster Druid. So this is a new Druid archetype. That's going to be arriving with Update 58. Replacing Nature's Protector here. Its themes are death, famine, decay, plague, poison, insects, moss, fungus, bleach bones, and scavengers. Yes, the Blightcaster is not a happy person. Maybe they are. But they sure deal with a lot of kind of decay and blight and death. Death is a necessary part of life. A dark take on Druid that celebrates the life cycle of death and decay. This druid's power still comes from the cycle of nature. It's just the end of that cycle. Helped along, in some cases, by you. Base class progression. Level 1, disease immunity. Level 2, wild shape of a plague wolf. Um, and all of these wild shapes aren't actually doing anything or are using placeholder art at the moment. A basic wolf form is replaced by plague wolf. Can transform into a magically diseased wolf. You get a 10% combat style boost to attack speed and a plus three bonus to attack while flanking plus 10 enhancement bonus to movement speed while in wolf form you get access to a number of spells and enhancements that require it but the cooldowns of your non-animal form spells are increased to two and a half times their normal length there's a bonus feat there of imbue toggle that only functions when in an animal form of either biting acid or biting poison doing acid or poison damage with all melee attacks scaling with spell power You'll notice hive form. That's kind of a fun one. So you can pick either the thornkin, a suit of living thorny wood around your body, armoring you from harm, or hive keeper. You give part of yourself to the hive, gaining insect-like reflexes and senses. Your bodily fluids become poisonous to others, and the swarm is always close. It gives you a plus one bonus to caster level and max caster level. Of po this is the poison acid thing. 25% concealment and evasion. Reflex saves increase by one for every three druid levels. And 10% vulnerability to cold. Um, you also get a thorn imbue on your weapons for a d6 piercing damage scaling with spell power. You'll get venom immunity at level five. And then you pick the other form at level eight. And then at level 11, you get Blighted Wolf, which is a greater plague wolf. You get more of the stuff. If unarmed, your natural attacks do 1d10, both piercing and slash damage, and critically hit for triple on a 19 or 20. And then you get the full elemental forms at level 13, up to and including Hive Master. You've become one with a swarm. You be shift between yourself and a cloud of insects. You're considered vermin. For, oh, that's not very nice. For the purposes of immunities, oh, okay, and are immune to mind effects and knockdown. Plus three bonus to caster level and max caster level of poison acid spells. Ethereal to monsters while tumbling, 50%. Concealment as displacement and improved evasion. Plus two imbued ice and uh, vulnerability, 15% to cold and some other bits. Uh, so they don't get wild empathy or good berry. Wolf Companions, Bear Form, Fire or Water Elemental Forms, or Automatically Memorized Spells. But they do get all the other things that are above, including some new thorns, like or new spells like Thorn Strike, Plant Growth, uh, Grasping Roots, Thorn Lance, Blighted Charge, Jaws of Doom, um, 
like I say, a bunch of these things that require forms, some that do not. And then you can just see the full list. I'm not going to go through it all here. But they get a lot of things like acid fog, um, wave of exhaustion. I see acid rain, negative energy ray. Some pretty good things there related to negative as well. Their past life is a plus five acid and poison spell power stacking up to three times. And really the enhancement tree enforces the acid, negative, poison, death, that kind of thing, right? Uh, debuffs. Death Eater is kind of a hot one, though. This is Core 6. I already saw people talking about this on the forums, which is you get a temporary hit point equal to your wisdom score whenever you get a, uh, kill an enemy. Whenever you kill an enemy, creatures two levels below you do not count. These hit points remain until damage removes them or the quest ends and can stack five times refreshed on each kill. So if you're going through killing a bunch of things, you're going to get uh, and presumably have a pretty high wisdom. That's a fair number of temporary hit points that are going to keep stacking on you. Uh, I know that I have really taken advantage of like Unyielding Sentinel and the other one uh, from Dark Apostate in terms of the temporary hit points. It's been great. So I would expect to see Death Eater to be pretty potentially powerful here as a Blightcaster as well. And I don't know that I really feel like going too much into the trees. It seems like something people can mostly look at. Uh, up to tier 4, Murder of Crows. A swarm of crows blast through you and a narrow path ahead. Enemies in the wake take piercing damage, make a save, uh, or be blinded. If you have a crow summon active from falconry when you use this ability, you gain the murder in your eye effect for 10 seconds. All your spells and attacks apply piercing damage to blind targets for every druid level. This damage can only apply once every two seconds. So go get them crows, essentially. SLA of Grasping Thorns, over up to tier 5, erupt from the ground, save or be entangled. On a successful save, the targets are still slowed by 35%. Targets also take 1d6 piercing damage every two seconds per caster level, doubled on targets which are entangled. So... There you go. And I am not in a position to talk about what, what's going to be in the third tree. We're going to have to wait for the next preview on that one. Uh, as stated, though, you know, the, the forms aren't there yet, but here, here is nonetheless the form that I'm in right now with my Blight Druid. And I'm in the Hive Keeper form. And you can see it's uh, like the Hive Master is not working. It's doing that. And the, the Blighted Wolf is, is just sort of a, a regular wolf right now. It doesn't have its art. So. But you can be surrounded by a constant swarm of insects there. So that's, that's pretty cool. And it says Hive. I assume it's going to be bees. All right. Um, we are at about halfway through the show. Let me go and get over to chat again and see what sort of thing I should mention. Yep, it is another class that can trap. That's true. You know, I know we've got rogues and artificers. I, I saw some people saying, hmm... Is this going to be an, another Death of Rogue? I don't think so. I think it'll be another flavor. But, you know. <laughs> A wild shaping druid archetype that goes into owlbear form to tie into the D&D &D movie coming out. I am down for this. I, I don't think it's going to happen, though. Sorry. That would be pretty cool, though. That would be fun. Any idea for resolving the coding issues you mentioned about a hireling that advances in level along with the character? A universal tree where fighters can get henchmen or paladins could get squires, caster types, get acolytes, alchemists get homunculus, etc. The uh, 
I have heard at least a couple of different iterations of something like that over the years. So, you know, inside of the office, we have very much brought this up ourselves at different points. So I would, you know, who knows, maybe, maybe someday, right? We'll see. Um, whether it ever actually happens or not. But yes, there, the idea of a summoning tree is certainly something that comes up uh, pretty much on the regular, as does the idea of, you know, hirelings that would get boosted or something like that, like a tree that would be for hires and summons, or maybe even just hires, for example. Uh, ultimately, the resolving the coding issue is not, I mean, it's it's an issue because it prevents it from being done easily, but it, it is working as intended, which is there wouldn't be a one hireling that could advance with you. You would have to make a different hireling for every single level of the game, and that's what you would summon every time. That that would be the solution under the, the way DDO is made. So it's it's an issue in that you're talking about having to not make one hireling but 32 currently right and then the ongoing maintenance thereof and i think that that's ultimately been one of the main reasons why it's it's struggled to to happen but we'll see maybe there maybe there is a better solution out there that'll happen someday uh when will we address imbue dice damage so that is impacted by diversion which is a threat reduction uh, I would love to know more about how you feel that should work, Luria. Um, ultimately, it would not be a question for me, though. It would be a question more for, say, Steel Star or Linabel or Torque. Could probably talk a little bit about that. Oh, that's something I could quick mention. I am aware of a community thing that will be happening here towards the end of the month. Uh, we have got scheduled over on the Twitch channel Arcanaverse. Uh, they're going to be chatting with Torque here towards the end of the month. I, I don't want to uh, oh, say a date and time uh, unless they've already announced it, but we're, we're working on getting Torque on Arcanaverse to talk raid, to talk specifically the Isle of Dread raid and about the secrets, the puzzle, how it came about, how it works, uh, why. Why, God, why? Why would you do that? Yes, uh, that's what it's going to be about. And that'll be uh, towards the end of the month here. So stay tuned for that. That should be pretty cool. The other bit of community news, though, I should mention is that we have got uh, a new person running DDO cast who's going to be given it a shot this Saturday. Is it this Saturday? Yeah, this Saturday, the 21st of January, 3 p.m. Eastern. Uh, for now, it is over on their Twitch channel, which is... Uh, twitch.tv slash k-a-l-e-v-a underscore Kaleva. Uh, but they're going to be working on getting it onto DDO cast. But Patrick, you know, at the end of the year, announced that he was stepping down from DDO cast, and that was uh, sad, but totally understandable. And it uh, looks like we've got someone who's going to be trying to pick up the reins on that. And that's this Saturday at 3 p.m. Eastern over on Twitch. So, um, you know, go ahead and stop by that show. I'll probably be listening in on chat if I can. So, uh, I don't have anything to say about the VIP program today. Uh, Obviously, it has been of great importance to us to uh, listen to your thoughts on it in recent weeks. And as soon as we have more to say, we will. But I don't have anything I can say today. So. Is there a rough estimate to a release? Um, I assume in this case you're talking about um, a release for update 58. Yes. I would expect to see update 58 sometime in February, probably a little bit later in February. You know, we've got our 17th anniversary uh, happening on the 28th of February, and we usually have a release around that time for the update of things like, say, the... Uh, 
the new dungeon and the archetypes. So, yeah. Well, more to say about that as we get closer to it. But yes, I would expect to see update 58 out in time for the anniversary. Yeah, right now, high form looks like a, a kind of this swarm of insects here. But I, I was just reading in our own known issues that the uh, wild shapes are not in yet. So. Is it just me, or does it seem like some, three of the five so far, the archetypes could be called evilish? We've definitely had a thing where we've been going a little darker on this, haven't we? I, I have noticed that as well, that, that we seem to be going a bit dark these days on our archetypes. But not entirely. You know, two of the three, well, one of the three, at least, in the initial batch were not dark. And uh, then the rest were... I, I, all I can really say is that when we're coming up with good I, with what we think are hopefully good ideas for this sort of thing, this is how it's worked out. Uh, it has not been a deliberate thing that I'm aware of, but uh, I, I have brought it up that, that maybe we should try for something a little less dark here as well. And uh, we do. We do have them already, and we'll be doing more. Is it a known issue? Gamma brightness, dim and lock sliders when in windowed mode for some. I, that's an old one. I remember that one going from quite a ways back. Uh, I can't speak as to whether that may be corrected in the future or not. Sorry. No, it's the 17th anniversary. We've already had the 16th. That's the thing. Yep. Yeah. Well, that worked for Wilderness Rare Chests, too, presumably Ransack. My belief is that it's for any chest that can Ransack, so I would think so. With the introduction of archetypes, are iconic heroes on the back burner? I would say... No. I mean, we definitely aren't abandoning iconic heroes as a choice. And I would definitely, I mean, I would expect to see, I would expect to see more in the future. But it is true that of late, you know, we late last year, we debuted archetypes and now we're doing round two of them. That with the work on archetypes, you know, we've chosen to do archetypes right now instead of iconics. So sure. In terms of, you know, we're working on archetypes right now, but I, I would expect to see us to at some point in the future do another iconic. Uh, Gildenara. That's interesting. I noticed that as well that I didn't see a lot of thrown weapon bits, even though it is in that preview thread. I'll have to follow up with Torque next week to see, are we just missing some thrown weapon bits or maybe maybe we should remove that from the text if it's not not totally true. They do have like thrown traps and admixtures, so maybe that's a little bit what is referenced. But I think that like you, I'd be like, okay, well that means, you know, throwing daggers and stuff. And I didn't really see much there related to that. Although additional piercing damage and things, but yeah, I would agree. Uh, yes, the art is a placeholder on the Mania. Hello, Storyteller. Nice to see you. People want Frago outside of having to purchase it from the x -Pack. I've heard of no plans to do that. If you want Frago, we'll see. We'll see.
if we make a suggestion, can you use it or is there legality involved? You want to suggest something, but don't want it not used because I blurted it out. So it is true that we will typically not only not respond, but not look at, hey, I've got a great idea for a dungeon, private message dumped to one of the developers. They typically don't read that because they don't want to be, they don't want to, it's a legal landmine that has been proven over and over and over again throughout game development over time. And so it's true that in general, you know, we love to read your ideas, but if you're offering like, hey, let me just give this to you for free, kind of a thing, they often will not really take a look at it because it's just, you don't want it, you don't want it in your head. You know what I mean? Um, so in that respect, I do think that there is some consideration. It's like, this is a great idea for a, a expansion. Let me show you all the maps and there's all the, you know, it's like, it's awesome that you did that. But I think in general, we don't quite look at that sort of thing. Otherwise, in general, it is very likely that if you're asking a question, someone else has already asked it somewhere else about DDO. So in general, I wouldn't get too hung up about, I better not give give away my good ideas. Unless you don't want to give away your good ideas, in which case you shouldn't be posting about them on the forums. Uh, I'm going to save the information, Dark Wolf, for about access to future archetypes and that to a later date. I would say it's certainly possible they could be incorporated into like something like an expansion someday. I mean, I would never say never on that kind of thing. But these ones, these ones are going to be widely available. And uh, we'll have more information about that in the near future. If you didn't already hear me blurt it out once. I would also expect to see new mounts in the future that are not horses. I know of at least one. March movie time. Can't wait. I know I'm looking forward to it too. Is there going to be another free content code? It would be very unwise to make a, a to blurt out a statement about whether we'd ever do something like that again. But sure, we well could we've done it before uh when is lamania closing my understanding is it'll be closing shortly probably after the live stream here today as a matter of fact and it'll be reopening in the near future yeah so i don't know that i actually have too much i can really show you today left about this but I wonder if i can I don't have the resource I want to use. I don't have the resource I want to use. It's it's not been working lately. There's a there's a place I can go where I can type in like I want to spawn X kind of monster and it'll spit out the information that I need as an admin in order to do that. But unfortunately, unfortunately, it's not working right now, so I can't use it. I don't think I've got my other list handy. Otherwise, I was going to close Lamania here with a little bit of weirdness. I don't know if I can do that or not. No. Nope. Sorry. Can't do it, I guess. Let's have to go hang out and chat instead. There's someone giving me a text message. Someone is. Let me see what's up. Okay. Nope. I don't have a code I can. Well, I can always do a kobold, but. Is 
Because that one I know. Also, uh, kill them real quick. Let me. We got that. Well, that was fun. Could I do that in Stormreach? I could. I could. Yeah. See if I if I could look up things I could maybe do a T-Rex or something, but at the moment I can't, unfortunately. Yeah, I think everyone's mostly AFK at this point, because it's it's just about the end of of the things. Alright, so we go. This There we go. I think if I then repeat the command. Drop kobolds. Airdrop kobolds on the harbor. I still have hints on. Yep. They've had enough. They're coming from the sewers. We've had enough of you. No, I don't think they take fall damage. No, your reaper wings won't allow you to fly. Sorry, that's uh is a specific admin command that I've used before on the show. I'm just cleaning up the marketplace a little bit. There we go. But let me let me end the show with a aerial view of the harbor. Uh, normally I can fly faster by setting myself a uh, different swim speed of all things. Unfortunately, my, my rendering distance may not really do what I want here. Let's get a little closer, I think. That's not bad. All right. Well, I think I'm going to wrap up the show here. I don't know that I've got too much more to talk about, and uh, we'll have more next week, hopefully. At the very least, next Friday at 4, I'm going to have Severlin on to do a bit of general Q&A with you. You can ask him about Update 58 and beyond if you'd like to. We will have the producer's letter coming up in the near future. Next week is Snow Peaks and Update 57.2. We'll have the release notes most likely on Tuesday, along with our downtime notice. The downtime will be a Wednesday. When it comes back up, Snow Peak should be active. We're getting ready in the near future to do our Orion and Sarlona free transfers. We'll announce beforehand, something like a little less than a week beforehand or so, uh, if we can, a week or so if we can. Um, 
that is going to happen and we'll give you all the information there and then finally this weekend is double daily dice xp and that is through sunday in terms of ddo bonus days thank you everyone for being here today really appreciate you joining me on the show i'll be back next week with more fridays at four here on twitch have fun